Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Sidetrack here, bringing you another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm taking a look, uh, kind of to accompany my item duck tutorial, on kind of some uses for item ducks. And we're going to actually look at an automatic sorting and processing machine. Uh, so you can kind of see in front of me the setup. Basically the things that we're going to be using are item ducks, and you can use either the opaque or the clear ones, or if you are really got lots of resources, you can use the energized ones. Um, we're going to use pulverizers, we're going to use powered furnaces, sawmills, you can uh, throw a magma, no, induction smelter on there. It's kind of up to you. So it's very expandable. Um, I'm going to talk about uses of things like um, the barrels from factorization, I'm going to use obviously the servos, and then I've got a bunch of chests. So if you're wondering what these crystal chests are, they are crystal chests from the iron chest mod. So let's see. This can start off as a very, very basic, fairly early game system. Um, to make this, you're going to need about 12 lead, about there are 12, about 12 tin, about six lead, or six hardened glass, depending on which item ducks you're making. You're going to need 26 iron, seven wooden planks, six copper, 13 redstone, six gold, 12 glass, 16 clay, two flint, three cobblestone. I think that's about right to make a very basic thing. And then you're going to have to have your power system. So whatever power system you hook up. It will vary depending on what you've got. Um, I'm obviously cheating, so it's okay. Um, all right, so what we've got is effectively an automatic, I think I said this, processing and sorting system. So what you want to do is the whole goal here is instead of having to come over to each individual you know, machine and stick things in there, you want to be able to put everything that you want processed into one chest. And once you put it into the chest, it'll automatically get sucked out, and things will go where they're supposed to go. So you'll have your ore that will go to the pulverizer, and once it's in the pulverizer, it'll get sent up to the redstone furnace. You've got the wood that will end up in the sawmill, right there, and you've got your food that will end up in the furnace. Now once things are done, they'll get spit out the other side, head on through your item ducts, and ultimately end up in some kind of storage system. I've just kind of set up some examples. You may or may not want to do it like this. All right, so how does this work? Basically, we've got just a simple, you know, export pipe from this. It's just, you know, regular item duct set to export. Redstone signal powering that. Items come down through these item ducts, and we have pneumatic servos that are filtering what things will go into the pulverizer, the powered furnace, so I will show you that, and my sawmill. Now as you can see I've got wood that goes to the sawmill and only these types of wood. I've got food that goes to the powered furnace and only those types of food. And I've got ore that goes into our pulverizer just like you'd expect. Now I've got to run downstairs really quick because I want to show you underneath. So this is fairly important. If you have this set up, and you have your items and you know they kind of go through the tubes we need to have kind of a storage buffer so you can kind of watch the what is that silver and iron will kind of keep making this loop um, and it's making that loop because the pulverizer is currently being used and they need to go to the pulverizer but since they can't enter the pulverizer they're getting rerouted back to this chest. If we didn't have this chest, they would continue on their way and actually end up in our overflow chest. So this chest is very important. Basically it says any of the things that you want to get processed need to end up in this chest so they loop around and don't get stored, which is good. Um, all right, so a couple of things to note down here. Um, we've got our chest set to import our process lines, and then I've also got this um, basically dense mode uh, on your pipe. So this is longer, so the items will prefer to go up into the pulverizer and up into your powered furnace and sawmill as opposed to into this chest, because it is shorter into the chest than it is going up there, well at least up here I think. Um, Alright, so once things are done or if they're not going to get processed, they go along this uh, pipe. And they come over to our chests. And you can see our chests are directly above. And if you were guessing that I was using a pneumatic servo to filter 
into these chests, then you are absolutely correct, because I am. <laughs> so things that I want filtered go into the chests. Things that are not going to go into the chests will get rerouted into these barrels. Now, these you probably would want to actually set up and seed with the items that you really want to go in there. I doubt you want to have a whole barrel full of signs and pneumatic servos because usually you don't have that many signs and pneumatic servos laying around. Um, I would probably suggest putting things like, you know, maybe redstone or lapis or cobblestone, things that you have lots of. But everything else, things like food, I have a food chest. Things like planks, I have a wood chest. Ingots all go into my ingot chest, so it's kind of a nice system. And then anything that is not going to go in the factorization barrels or in our crystal chests is going to end up in my other stuff chest. And this is probably really where you'd want things like your signs or your pneumatic servos. Um, but yeah, uh, you can expand this as much as you'd like. This is really just a demonstration. Um, you can kind of get an idea for how I ended up doing this on my own base if you check out my you know, let's play, um, or you can make up your own stuff, which is cool too. All right, so this is the basics. You've got processing line, things get processed, anything that's processed or not going to be processed at all gets sent and sorted to where you want it to go. But you can expand this, and you can expand this quite a lot. So one easy way to expand it is just to add more pulverizers, powered furnaces. Um, you could add more sawmills. And again, you're going to keep using your, um, oop, I don't know what I was filtering there. Um, you're going to keep using your filters so that you get things that you want. If you want to send things to just a pulverizer, you know, you can say, hey, I want bones to go to this pulverizer. And the pulverizer is going to export right out the side and things will go down. The redstone furnace is actually cooking food here and setting it out the side. So there's a lot of expandability to this. You know, but again, the basic gist of it is everything goes into one chest, you drop everything in there, and then it goes wherever you want it to go. You'll notice that none of these should get processed. They'll, they'll, they'll just go on down the line and probably end up in a factorization barrel. But again, just like before, we've got chests down below that act as a buffer to keep things that we want processed to just going in a loop and staying processed. And things that we don't want processed will end up all the way down here in our chests. Now, some of you are thinking, but I don't want to use a pulverizer. I want to use, say, an induction smelter. Well, you can certainly do that. Um, my suggestion, if you have factorization, um, if you don't, you can just use a regular chest, is to pump cobblestone above uh, your items or your pulverizer. And this is a hopping barrel. This is actually a suggestion from one of my viewers. Um, and it just drops cobblestone right into the pulverizer, input is on the top, and exports sand into the induction, induction smelter. You'll notice that there's no power, this isn't actually hooked up to anything, um, it's just kind of a demo. If you want to see this in action, you can go check out my Let's Play. Um, so I think this is pretty cool. I mean, I this is actually what I use, especially early game, because it's just fairly simple to set up, um, and it's very expandable, which I like. But you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, I'm kind of finished with this. How else can I expand this? Well, there are a lot of ways. And one of them involves simply replacing this chest, um, if you have the ender chests mod, um, with an ender chest, and then you just carry an ender pouch in your inventory. So, say you have, pretend you are down mining in the ground and you got a whole bunch of ores and your inventory is full and you're like, oh, I want to process these. Well, you just kind of send them into the ender pouch and the ender pouch is linked with the ender chest and things will get extracted directly from the ender chest and sent to where they're supposed to go. And I'm going to show you this because it's a little different setup down here than I did over there. In here, I've got a separate, basically holding chest for each processing line. Now I've got one that's going to do wood one that's going to do food, and then one that's going to do metal over there. Now, if you kind of look up, this chest and this processing line is not connected to the pipes that end up ultimately going up to our sorting area. And that's important because with this, these chests will hold on to the items 
and not send them through kind of a loop like we did over there. So it's kind of a, a probably a little bit better way of doing it. Um, but it requires using a bit more, if I can get up here, kind of floating above. <laughs> it requires a bit more item ducks because you have to kind of route it down and then you route another one up and around. But it works really well. So you're thinking to yourself, well, maybe I don't want to use a pulverizer. Say I want to use something like the smeltery from Tinker's Construct. And you could certainly do that. You just send your pipe over to, you know, maybe a hopper, or you can just pipe it directly into the smeltery. And then on the other side of the smeltery, I would strongly recommend using a fluid duct just to set it to extract mode. I think I have a, yeah, I've got a, a pneumatic servo on here set to low. And then things will automatically get extracted and dumped onto your casting tables and then sent out the bottom off down to be sorted later on. So this is there's a lot of expandability with this with other mods, um, which I really like. You don't have to use Tinker's Con or Th Tinker's Construct. You don't have to use thermal expansions processing machines. If you've got anything else, you're more than welcome to do that. So just like before, all of these pipes end up kind of coming up over here. And I didn't really do much of a sorting system over here. I figured you kind of could get it over there. Um, and you can sort things into chests. You can sort things all into one chest if you want. Make it nice and simple. You can see the ores are getting processed. Um, cobblestone made it all the way through. The diamond and the lapis made it all the way through. And the wood got turned into planks. Um, so you could send it into one chest. You could send it into what I do with my Let's Play series and uh, actually import it into an ME system, or a, yeah, ME, Applied Energistic System. You could set up a bunch of barrels, a bunch of different chests. It's really up to you. So I really like this. I think this is kind of a very nice, easy, basic setup to sets up really quickly. You don't have to worry about powering it like uh, something like logistic pipe, logistics pipes, which is arguably much more powerful than this system, but it does require a certain amount of power maintenance, um, and it's for some people, especially for beginners, um, it's a little over some people's heads. So I think this is fairly simple to understand because you just have items that go through pipes. You want the pipes to take the items where you want them to go. So you have pipes going into machines and then pipes going out of machines and the items just go into the machines and then out of machines and end up in the chest that you want them in. Um, so hopefully this gives you some ideas. Hopefully you, in, you find this useful. Um, if you do, let me know. If you don't, let me know. Um, and I think that's all I've got. So until next time, this is Sidetrack signing off. Have a great day, folks.